Shalom. 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 We are the Hebrew Israelites coming out again to declare the downfall of the wicked society, um, namely Babylon the Great, aka America. So, without further ado, we would like to give all the praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakat Kudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, not a part of the camp, but we believe that they have the 144% truth. And that's and we teach thus, okay? Shalom, greetings and salutations to all you brothers on the highways and hedges, bringing this word with all sincerity. And shalom to all you sincere listeners, which include you Aquaf and you confusion of faces Israelites. All right. So, without further ado, we want to get into, um, you know, where we are, where we are at this present moment, you know. So, you know, we'll, no man know at the time or the hour, but we know it, the season of which we are in, okay? The season, uh, the season now is the season of war. You know, the season now is the dismantling of, of, of this wicked system. And you see that every day before we, we started here, we were talking about the, the epidemics that have been hitting Babylon the Great and hitting their great cities. You know what I mean? That, that, that has changed even the landscape of their cities from what was once great to now what is uh, absolutely uh, accessible. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about uh, the fentanyl. People are people are on the fent fentanyl, and and largely it's Edomites. You know what I mean? Okay, you have got some two thirds on it too, but largely it's Edomites. You know, and large and, and a lot of those Edomites are people that were prosperous just not so long ago. You know what I mean? But and now you know now you you you're coming with that uh, slippery slope of. Uh, slippery slope of destruction, okay, before the actual great destruction, you know, with people sofa surfing now, people sleeping in their RVs, people sleeping in their cars, people running three jobs and still can't have enough money for a roof over their head, you know what I mean, you are, we are seeing the destruction of a society, you know, uh, in, in the stages, and we are looking and we are understanding that this is a time where a power structure has fallen because even if you go back to the Roman empires, if you go back to to empires like that, when the people started cross dressing and started to uh, and started to do all types of folly, which is being done now, you, you you know you you knew that the fall. We know now that the fall of the empire was imminent when they started to do when they started to do that. And what did the angel? of Yahweh Shai say to the disciples, they say, ye men of Galilee, you know, why, why, why are you staring up at the, uh, up at the chariot? I'm roughly paraphrasing. He's put, uh, and then he said, um, as, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. You understand? And, and, and this is where we're at. This is where we're at, where sin has exceedingly multiplied upon the earth. Where, where wickedness has exceedingly multiplied upon the earth. This is where we act right now, okay? And, and uh, the judgment of this earth and the judgment of these, of these uh, confederate forces that have been against Israel and have been against the men of the elect and have been against Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, they are about to receive their judgment now, okay? You know, chiefly Esau, Edom, and his power structures which he has created around the earth. You know, they are falling. Babylon has fallen, it's fallen. We are watching this, okay? And uh, just to make it, uh, just to make it plain upon tables for you to see, okay? Yeah. If uh, I've got something related to what you was bringing out earlier when you was talking about these Edomites that are strung out of fentanyl. You know what I mean? Sleeping, standing up, slumped over in the middle of the street and all that. Shit. You know what I mean? Which is symbolic of a crumbling empire, which is representation of Esau Edom's uh, uh, going into destruction, man. That's he, right. Because he is the son of perdition, okay? And perdition means destruction. 
so they're destined for destruction. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, and verse 7. It says, And Yahweh thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies and upon them which that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Okay, and I was talking about these Edomites, man. Obviously, they persecute the hell out of you so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, which are biblical Hebrew Israelites. Okay. And, uh, you know, everybody knows this. Everybody knows that, you know, you're systematically oppressed and that these nations hate you. Okay. So I'm going to read that one more time. This is Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And Yahweh thy power. Okay. Prevail on the Lord thy God. Our God. Okay. It says, We'll put all these curses upon thine enemies. You know, the Bible calls them our enemies, not our friends, man. Okay. And it says, and upon them that hate thee, which persecuted thee, which is these other nations, man. Okay, predominantly Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Okay. So the Lord has put these curses on them. They're going through hell right now, watching their kingdom fall apart. Okay. Having the, um, the, the you know, they're the richest in society also. Through, um, you know, through having the game rigged. You know what I mean? They get generational wealth that dates back to slavery. You know what I mean? So they're the richest of the society and they're watching that money fall between their fingers, man, because of the, the, the oppression of their own people, man. The elites of their own nation, elites, the elites of the nation of Edom, man, is oppressing not even, not just us, but their own people also. So these people are, are suffering the curses, a lot of the curses that we went through, man, and that we're still going through, okay? They're catching hell too, you know? And like I said, they're the richest of this society, so they got more to lose. Jake, you know what I mean? Jake can handle uh, being oppressed because we're a stronger nation for one. And for up for, for two, we ain't got money in the bank like they do. Right? They got a lot more to lose than us. So they're losing sleep at night, man. Watching their kingdom fall, man. And it's beautiful to see, man. Yeah, yeah. And all you mid-range, I mean, I mean these mid-range Edomites, the, the, who thought there was something within the world, are suddenly realizing that, uh, you know, the, the, the finances they thought they have really amount to, amount to jack shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you understanding that it only takes a little bit of time out of the financial game to lose it all. And that's happening to a lot of people. A hell of a lot of people. You know, like corporations going on. You know, and, and soon, and soon you'll have nothing left here. You know, because uh, the, the sorceries you have used against the earth ha are now returning upon your own head. You know, and uh, all your New World Order strategy, all the strategy that they have is of, of uh, destroying this place with thermal fire and then coming out the bunker eventually is, is gone. You know, it's, 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 it's a miss because who's going to rule after that? is the Israelites under Yahweh Shai and the 144,000. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, quickly just bring this up because uh, I think it's relevant. You know, uh, obviously, uh, the book of Deuteronomy you read earlier, we are talking about the curses being lifted up and blessed and on them. You read in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 28, verse 15 through 68, you'll, you'll understand the curses that were set on the Israelites for, for disobeying the Lord. Now that we're coming back to who we are, our heritage, following after the, the law, statutes, and commandments, we're starting to see now that these curses are being lifted off of us and being placed on our enemies, right? In the in the 1980s, around that that era, you had the the crack epidemic, you know, and you had these Edomites out here that had no mercy on us. They were throwing us in jail, splitting up our families. Huge and, years, two and, big and, years. Yeah, and there was no compassion. They were they were, you know. Hey, just say no. Just say no. Yeah. Now that you see through, you know, the, when you look through the lens of, of the, the scriptures, you can see these curses have been lifted off of us and been placed on them. Because now they're experiencing this uh, this opioid epidemic. But it's not, you know, it's not a criminal um, uh, issue. They, they've labeled it as a, a health risk, you know. And they've got all the compassion in the world for, for these people. But when our people were going through the same thing, they were demonizing us. They were throwing us under the jail. Yeah, and we were the scum of the earth. But, exactly. but the Most High sees them. You know what I'm saying? So the Most High sees, oh, the Fenning ain't giving you, you know, they're still giving you a sympathy for the Fenning. 
let me bring in some trank yeah. on top of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so you know, we, we know that the time is now. We know yeah. that the season of the end is now. Sorry, Akwa, you, no, no, you, you done could, with yeah, that? Yeah, you could, no, no, because uh, uh, just like you were saying, you know, the season is now. Yeah. We've come into the season. I've got this scripture here. This is in the book of Second Ezra, chapter 16, and only verse 1. And it says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. The word woe is talking about the destruction. It says, Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children. And be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. And that's the times we're coming into. Uh, destruction is at hand, right? Yeah. It says, A sword is sent upon you. And who may turn it back? Like, who's going to be able to stop what's coming? You know, the Lord is sending this stuff, you know, to, to render his judgment, his anger, you know, his vengeance. He's, he's sending this out to the earth, right? And the people that are going to get destroyed, you know, starting with the, the two-thirds of our nation, our own nation, you know, but then the rest of the nations, what do you think, what, what do you uh, expect is in store for them? A whole, uh, a hell of a lot worse. And, and, uh, Lord willing, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in this lesson, we edify you and, and, and show you, give you examples of, of these, uh, these curses and, and this destruction that's coming upon this place. That's right. That's right. Are you still going on? No, no, you're good. That's right, because we're in that season, as, as, as we've been saying. We, you know, we in that season, two, two of the big things that are, 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 are going to come to pass. And what does the Most High say? Behold, I come quickly. So, don't don't rest on your laurels and, and think that this 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 is something in, in you know a thousand years or three hundred years and you won't yeah. see it in your lifetime because yeah, even no, if no, you no, don't no, see it in your lifetime you are judged still based on the same scriptures okay so we, we what what we're saying is the season of destruction is upon us what we're waiting for uh, for them who didn't know as well the two major things that still need to come to uh, to pass is the MOTB which is approaching rapidly with this uh, um, you know with, with, with the banking system CBDCs. Uh, CBDCs as they are right now you know the CB the, the digital currency has rapidly accelerated in a short space of time right and we and we also waiting for the thermal nuclear destruction to come upon the earth which putin has said in 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 multiple occasions that 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 he'll use it. trump has said that he'll use it he said his red button is bigger than is bigger than russia's red button you know what i'm saying so the talk of this is here the season is here you know so realize the season that you're in the time has finished okay the time for folly is done. I'm going to read this. And this is the book of Matthew 24 and 32. And it says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye see all these things, know that it is near. Even at the doors. So I'll read that part again. So likewise ye, when ye see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now you might rest on your laurels and say, yeah, till all. These things are being fulfilled in front of your face, man. The brothers have just told you about the the curses of of of, of uh, that are being put upon Israel, being put upon the enemies. Are you not seeing it through the eye, uh, spiritual eyes? These things are being fulfilled daily, rapidly, rapidly. Yeah, that's okay. The, that's the sight. It's You can see it all around, man. There's, there's you know, um, look at downtown LA for example. That's a perfect example of people losing their losing everything. Exactly, exactly. Okay. I know, no, that's cool. I mean, how 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 far can it go with the transformer reading kids uh, kids uh, to kids at school now and telling them that this is the way to be? How much further? I mean, even just think practically. You know what I'm saying? With, with family with family structures breaking down, how much further? You know what I mean? With with the uh, 
the, the, the production of children actually being frowned upon. How much further can the society go with, with, with the, the things of the Lord being ostracized, being, uh, being demonized within the earth? You know, and it's, oh my, I'll be finishing a little while. Out. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And that means the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father are forever. And, and they, will be, uh, they will be implemented within the inward parts of the elect. Okay, uh, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For is, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And if you understand, we are building the spiritual ark right now. You, you, you understand? This spiritual ark is to house the men of the elect. That's why we are sighing and crying. It is a spiritual ark that will give us salvation. Noah built a physical <coughs> ark that gave salvation to him and his family. And we are building the spiritual ark to give salvation to us and the rest of the elect. Okay? Yahweh <coughs> Ratazza. Yahweh Ratazza. You understand? For, yeah, eating and drinking, giving until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came. So that time it was flood, and this time it's thermal nuclear destruction. Okay? And took them all away. So also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah. So you 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 looking at the season. What you what, what, what I want you to take from that is you are looking at the season where the the men of the Lord are sighing and crying in the streets. You know, even that that should tell you that this is a countdown. Now. When you see the men of the Lord sighing and crying in the streets, you should know that that is really a countdown. This is the time of the end. I got precept fits perfectly with that man. It's the book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse eight. It says, "I'll start at seven. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more, as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. You know, this is a very profane society, man, because it's ruled by the man that is known to be profane, man. The nation of Edom, or in other words, known as Esau." The scriptures say that he was so profane that he sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. You know what I mean? This is a profane man we're talking about. It says, uh, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. It says, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Okay, uh. and that's us, man. We're the souls of the just. You know, the scriptures say that his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by their faith. That's in the book of Habakkuk, I believe, chapter 2, verse 3. Is it? You've got that on deck. Hold that one sec. For the scriptures say, my brother's about to bring out that the uh, souls of the just complain continually. Okay, I'll read the last part of it. it says, uh, the innocent. And righteous blood crieth unto me, which is what we're doing here, sighing and crying on the street corners, all the abominations that are done in the midst. You know what I mean? We're calling out, the, uh, we're, we're chanting down Babylon, basically, man. We're crying for the destruction of this place, man. We're pleading for the destruction of this place because we're not having fun here. We're not loving it here. Okay? So it says that the, that the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, that's us. It says, and the souls of the just complain continually. When we're on social media, we're not on there for folly and entertainment, man. We're on there sharing information, edifying the acum, you know what I mean, about current events, about the current status of this society, how it's, uh, it's falling to crap, 
you know what I mean, right before our eyes, which is a glorious thing, okay? And we're complaining also continuously because we're the souls of the just, the just that live according to faith. That's right. Yeah, man. You know, and that, that's, uh, that's, that's good that you touched on that point, that we're out here sighing and crying, complaining continually. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and I'm going to start from the top, verse 1. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me uh, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So we're out here getting a reproof from the Lord. We're getting reading these scriptures, under, getting the understanding, the breakdowns, and then we're looking to, to see these events unfolding, and we're filtering that through the scriptures and letting you know, right? It says, uh, and we're, we're on our watch, so we're just keeping an eye out and let you know, like the time is here, the time is, is near. It's about to all come crashing down. And verse 2 says, And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. And that's what we're doing. We're out here making it plain upon tables. Look, the curses are being lifted off the Israelites. They're being placed on these other nations. Look, Russia's building up his military to, to, to fight against America's military. Right? you got NATO, all of that stuff culminating to um, Armageddon, or Armageddon, you know, the, ba uh, the Valley of Decision, right, where all the nations will be fighting, and that's when Yahweh Shai returns, after all the prophecies have been fulfilled. We're letting you know that the, the MOTV is, is upon us, you know, just seeing videos now where, you know, people can't even walk into the, 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 uh, uh, the shops without scanning something for us to get in. Please look at camera for entry. And if you stand on the shoes and look into the spheroid until you get the green light, that'll open the door for you. Oh, stand on the shoes? <laughs> So look at this. You're in London, you're on a business trip. You're staying in Greenwich and you want to buy some food. So you go into the local oldies, like this one, and you think, I'm going to go in here and buy some food so that I can feed myself. And then you approach the barrier and look, you can't even get in the shop without having a QR code to scan here or to scan here and then you can go in and buy things. This is very strange. Like this is Whole Foods Market. So you can't even walk into Whole Foods unless you go through this machine? I need my own QR code. How do I get my own QR code? How do I get my own QR code? You mean I have to have my own QR code to come into Whole Foods? You don't have to send your own what do they do? They just what? It what just are they? knows you have it because it scans it. It knows you have products? Yeah, it's like the, the, the Wi Fi or whatever it is. It scans the products. Whoa. And this is the future of grocery yeah, stores? Who's doing that first? Whoa. Who did this first? Yeah. Where in California? Where was the first one? Yeah. You don't see? She's from California. You got here in in, uh, in in the UK, you got Aldi. You know, you got this barcode that you need to scan on your phone in order to access the store, and then you got wholesale foods in America that's doing the exact same thing. You know, and Yahweh Ratzal, Lord willing, you know, I could play some clips to show you. But these are the things that we're seeing, and we're filtering it through the scriptures because these are the times that we're coming into, right? And then this is the this is the point, verse three. It says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie." So, hey, we're seeing it come to come yeah. to pass. We're seeing it with our own eyes, and we're telling you, look, this stuff is is coming. We're the messengers that have been set up by the Lord to, to deliver this message to give you the warning. So you can't turn around and sit there and say, oh, "I didn't know it was coming," because you've got Israelites all over the world that's giving the same message. And that's what, how we know the season that we're in as, as concerning Matthew 24, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
Exactly, and not not every single camp is the exact same. Only the camp of Great Millstone is talking about these these prophecies coming to pass. You know, you got other camps that do, you know, go into it a little bit, but they don't give you the full truth, right? The Great Millstone uh, are the only ones out here giving you the, the spirit of prophecy, give, giving you the breakdowns, giving you the understandings, going into the scriptures, you know, and breaking it down, and breaking in real it down, time, yeah, you know? the, the correct way, right? And I'm gonna just finish this off, and it says. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Meaning, hey, even though it's taking a long time, like my brother here brought out earlier, a lot of people are saying, not in our lifetime, yeah. because it's taking so long for it to happen. Just because it ain't happened yet, don't mean it ain't going to happen in your lifetime. You're still living, right? Exactly. So it can happen at any point. And, and bear in mind that, that, that uh, you know, in the heavenly structure of things, which it all goes to, goes according to anyway, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even a thousand years could pass. I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying that. But a thousand, two thousand years have passed since Yahawashai. You know, and and uh, to to Yahawashai, that is two days. Yeah, two days ago. You know, you know what I mean? Hey, these, so, these devils crucified me two days ago. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you you'd be like, all right, I'm ready. To, hey, gather the armies. Let's get ready to, to, to yeah. do this thing, man. Yeah. Still fresh. Still yeah. fresh in his mind. Yeah. Even though it's been 2,000 years Still to us. Hey, you know, like my brother just mentioned, yeah. that days is a thousand years and a thousand years yeah. is one day. So what do you think? 2,000 years, two days. Yeah, and, and we have reoccurring spirits as well. You know, we have uh, we have rejuvenation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is another topic. But regeneration. You have, yeah, regeneration. Regeneration. So you have... Uh, Reoccurring spirits, you know what I mean, coming back into 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 vessels. You understand? So, what what you would think is a man is sleeping for forever, that spirit is coming back. You know what I mean? Because because uh, even Yahweh Shai said he wants uh, Pontius Pilate and the and 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 those other uh, bandaleros to see him when he comes back. How are they going to see him? Is not or are not they long time dead? No, they're going to be here. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. the scriptures say that when the Lord comes, that every eye shall see him. And it says also them that pierced him. Them that pierced him, yes. They're here today too, man. Because all the population of the world, it's like close to 8 billion people on the planet. You know, the spirit, hey, them spirits got to be back here, man. This is that generation. And this is the book of Psalms, chapter 12, verse 5. It says, for the oppression of the poor, which we're the poor, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, and we know who our oppressor is. We all have the same oppressor. We all got that in common, man. That's why we're brothers, man, because this Esau hates us. Spiritually, we know we're brothers, man. So this is Psalms 12, 5. It says, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, which is that, that's us, man, the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst of us, man. We're the needy, we're the poor, okay? We sigh. We're the trodden down, we're the despised. We're the, we're the bottom of the barrel, according to these heathen, man. Okay? The scum of the earth, if you will, in their eyes. So I'm going to read that from the top one more time. It says, For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith Yahweh, I will set him in safety, from him that puffeth at him. That's right. And that's what our enemies do, man. They puffeth at us. Okay? Which means they stick their chest up in pride and look down on us, man. They don't give a damn about our oppression, man. Okay? I've got a little precept to back that up. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 10 and verse 5. I'll start at verse 4. It says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, hence the reason why he puffs at us, because he's a proud-ass devil. Okay? Everybody knows they're a proud nation of people, man. These Edomites, the so-called white man, proud as hell, man, because they they stole everything. They stole their way into the top of society, so they think they're they think they're the Lord's gift to earth, man. And really, they're the basis of all nations, according to the Holy Scriptures. So it says, uh, Psalms ten and four. It says, the wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after the Most High. It says, the Most High is not in all his thoughts. These people are Satanists on average, man. And when they do think they're worshipping the Most High, they're worshipping the devil still. Because Sergio Bourget, who they call Jesus, that's a devil also, man. 
Okay? Yeah. Can you just show that sign back there, please? Father Kushar. Because that, these, this man right here who they're worshipping the Christian church, man, that's the damn devil, man. Okay? That's Sergio Bourget, the sixth Pope of Rome's son, who was a flaming uh, H O M O. Okay, I gotta choose my words carefully. Okay? And that's the picture that they portray as the Lord, man. It's, get the hell out of here, man. You know what I mean? Give a damn about that image, man. That's a false image of the Most High, okay? You know, just to, just to jump in before you uh, continue on. A lot of people get offended with that sign. They say, why you got horns on Jesus? Like, that's the, devil, that's the damn devil. Like, why not? That's why, you know, that's what the devil does, the deceiver. That, that image is a deception. Yeah, and speaking of that, that offense, right? People are always offended when we bring out the scriptures. People are always offended when we bring when we cast the light upon the abominations which are done in the midst you know what i'm saying but things have come to pass within this earth that uh people have actually found out what's been happening within the the realms of the elites you know what i'm saying and there's no major outcry but we actually speak truth highlighting these things and people uh become offended more and more against the actual truth. Have I become your enemy because I have told you the truth? You know what I'm saying? But th th this is this is the thing. People love the darkness. You know, ye men of, of this faith. You because gotta, these are evil. Man. Yeah, you got to understand that people actually love the, dark, the darkness. Oh, the jump shot made a whole lot of people die. Hey, don't say that. You know what I mean? But it's true. I'm going to read that one more time, okay? I was speaking about how uh, the scripture says in... Oh, you know, I'll start again. This is Psalms uh, 12 and 5. It says, For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Yahweh. I will set him in safety. That's talking about us. He's going to set us in our own land that, that was stolen from us by these devils. Okay? It says, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. These devils, man, they puff at us. And I'm going to back that up in this precept right here. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 10. We'll start at verse 4. The wicked, which is the so-called white man, pursuing to Malachi 1 and 4, Job 9 and 24. It says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after the most high, their devil worshippers. They're into slip, not Metallica and all that crap. That's their spirit. Okay? <laughs> It says, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after the Most High. The Most High is not in all his thoughts. Verse 5, it says, his ways are always grievous. Yeah. Everything they're doing in this world is grievous. They're trying to push LD, LGBTQ, NMNP, HIV on our children. Okay? That's grievous. They're trying to force you to take the jump shot, or you're going to lose your job, or be ostracized from society. You can't go to the movie theater you can't watch us satanic disney movies you know what i mean everything they do is grievous man it says his ways are always grievous it says thy judgments are far above out of his sight it says as for all his enemies he puffeth at them that's a precept to what i just brought out man and we're his enemies the just the ones that are sighing and crying for the abominations and they puff at us man yeah, yeah, that goes into what we were talking about before. Like we're highlighting stuff, and 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 they and they uh, suddenly be the bad guy, you know. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They hate him that rebuke at the gate, and that's us rebuking at the gate, man. We're rebuking this devil. Somebody's got to stand up for righteousness, regardless of how offensive it seems, man. Someone's got to speak up and have the nuts to say something, man. Yeah. And and we need a savior, you know. We need a savior. To actually save us from this demon, you know? That's it. Because we can't do nothing ourselves with our little peace shooters, man. You know what I mean? And Esau's got all these armies and militaries and laws in place. Yeah. We're powerless, man. Precept. Psalm chapter 7, verse 1. O Lord, my power, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest he tear my soul like a lion, 
rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. You understand? And and that shows you without Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, we are finished. Sir, we need divine intervention. Yeah, we are cleaving. We are cleaving with 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 great hope and faith unto our Lord of, 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 of all lords, the power of all powers, you know, the creator of this heaven and the earth. You know, if he be for us, then who can be against us? You know what I'm saying? Them that are with us, them that are with us are greater than those that are with them. You understand? So no, none of their, their, their magic on the left hand side, none of their enchantments. You know what I'm saying? At the end of it, our Lord will have the victory over this devil. Over the, uh, over the counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan upon the earth which is Esau, Edom and the other nations which are in league with him. You understand? Yeah. Because he has set traps and stratagems to capture us. Matter of fact, I'll continue. I'll read uh, the same one. Psalm 7 and uh, 15. And it says, uh, He made a pit and digged it and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own own plate. Pate. Uh, pate, yeah, yes. upon his own pate, yeah. That's the top of your head, basically. Right, right, right. We're gonna, he's gonna get, he's gonna get that lash. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. To the name of the Lord Most High, Nate. That's it, that's it, man. Nate, yeah. You understand? You, Nate. <laughs> we will sing praises to the, the name of the Lord. You understand? Because then how will he know that we're singing to him? That's it. The name is very important. Don't underestimate the power of his holy name, man. You think it's just uttering a name the lord knows who i am who i'm talking about no that ain't the way this works man you've got to call upon the correct name there's power in the correct name okay no power in any other name out there why you want to fight against the name that's what i want why you want to fight against the name of the heavenly father and the son why you you you, you you're proclaiming this word this word, ain't you? You know, but you're saying Jesus and Christ. Why, why, why you want to fight against the name? Most high in Christ, bless. What the hell is a most high in Christ, bless, man? Is the is the Lord's name most high? Is the Lord's name most high? No, it's is most high the strong tower that we run into. You can say most high in place of saying God. Okay. Yeah. But that's not his name. That's just a type. Yeah, and that's why you say the, the the other one, you know. If you want to really go into the Hebrew, you know, but not 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 to try and, but you the, the other one, you know. A lot of brothers say other one, that's right. but but you you want to actually go into the English and force the English, you know, Christ Most High in Christ, bless. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Better get that name right. Get out of here. Acts four and twelve. You know what I mean? It says. Um, it's the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved that's the power of his name man that's the name you've got to call on for salvation okay and we stress this time and time again the importance of getting that name correct man okay yeah, I wanted to um, I wanted to touch a little bit more on the destruction. You know, we're starting to see uh, a lot of things happening in the world, a lot of distractions. You know, you had this um, the submarine that went underground, or under the ocean, and uh, lost communication, and ultimately the the crew ended up perishing. Right, but the the distraction behind that was that in the background they were doing all kinds of wickedness. Right. And that wickedness is, is why the Lord needs to reset this place because, you know, it's just one thing after the other. He saw creates the problem and then 
you know, has the solution in, in, in the background, right? So this is in the book of uh, Matthew 24, because the scriptures talk about the things that are coming in the earth, right? And uh, this is Matthew 24, verse 6. It says, if you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, right? And we are seeing those those uh, rumors of wars. you got uh, Russia, China going up against NATO and, and America and the rest of, of the European Union, you know? And eventually that thing's going to boil over. It's going to ultimately end in, in America being completely destroyed. But you're starting to see these other nations now starting to draw the line, right? You know, America's allies, like France, for example, is now getting into business with the BRICS nations. France. President Emmanuel Macron wants a slice of the action. He wants an invite to the upcoming BRICS summit in South Africa in August. Here's why. Does France want to join BRICS? Is Paris sending its love to the Organization of Developing Nations? Is this a sign that BRICS is entering the big leagues? While it's possible, it's still too soon to be sure. Here's what we know for certain. Yesterday, French media reported that Emmanuel Macron had a request. He wanted South African President Cyril Ramaphosa to invite him to the upcoming BRICS summit. The 15th annual BRICS summit is taking place between the 22nd and 24th of August. It's being held in the South African city of Johannesburg. Leaders from the five BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, will be present. We're talking about presidents and prime ministers. Along with these five nations, there will be other guests, the friends of BRICS as they're called. Bangladesh, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Indonesia have all been invited, as have some other nations. Many are hopeful about becoming members. Reports say some 14 countries have applied to join the grouping. The latest application is from Egypt, and some Egyptian corporations are excited by the prospect. Right? America's not too happy about that because they're, they're collapsing the dollar. Those right? that were at peace with the American wound under Exactly, you know? exactly. You know, America's allies are going to burn her with fire. Right? Roughly paraphrase it. But I'm going to keep reading it. It says, see that ye be not troubled. Right? And that's talking about the, the ones in the know, the elect. Right? Don't be troubled by the things that you're about to see. Because ultimately, you're out here doing the will of the Lord. You know, we're, we're preaching and giving the message, the warning to the people out there to let them know what's coming, right? But the people that don't know, they're going to be blindsided by it because they don't, they're not paying attention to what's happening. They're just out here lollygagging, living their lives, doing their own thing, you know, more concerned about the Kardashians than, than the fact that World War III is about to pop up, right? It says, for all, uh, it says, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So this is just the beginning, right? This is just the, the, the beginning stages. It's gradualism. Certain things build up, and it's building up, culminating to that, that ultimate day of day of the Lord, you know, that ultimate judgment. That, that frog swimming in the saucepan. That's right. right. As it's getting heated up more, that's, more and more, you know? That's it. It says, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Now, this is the part that I was sort of focusing on. The famines. That's another thing that, uh, another part of prophecies that has to play out. You know, there's going to be a time where there's going to be a lack of bread. You know? And what do you think happens when, when there's no food around? People are going to go crazy. Look what happened during the, the, the lockdowns. People were going crazy over toilet paper. Now, what relevance will toilet paper have over food? You know? People ain't going to be caring about no toilet paper if there's no food. You know? It says, uh, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. And we're seeing these things. Every time we switch on the news, uh, a volcano has erupted in this country, or an earthquake's gone off in this country, you know? Pestilences, all these new viruses that, that, that keep popping up out of the blue. You know? You had the, the, the monkeypox. That all of a sudden just came out of nowhere. You know? It disappeared. It disappeared. Exactly. So what's the next thing? You know, they keep talking about these these uh, elites keep talking about the next the next pandemic, the next major event that, that, that's going to rip the earth. The next pandemic. And there will be one. There will absolutely be an outbreak of another pandemic. We definitely will have to face other surprises, black swans, as they are called, uh, maybe different kinds of viruses. But also there will be a surprise outbreak. You know, we need to be prepared for it. You know, 
all these things are being orchestrated by the enemy. Mainly Esau Edom, because they're the wicked of the earth. Order out of chaos. Order out of chaos. That's the sword of the most high, man. Yep. And it says, verse 8, which is the point, and I'll end off here. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So this is just the beginning. Right? We're, right. Just, we're just getting into the beginning stages of the destruction that's coming. Right? And I know we keep going on about it. You've probably seen videos of ours before where we're talking about the same thing. But we have to keep reiterating it so you understand how important the times that we're in are. Yeah. If, if I just may say, I mean, based on that, what you've just said there, you must also understand that new things materialize day to day. You understand? Which makes, which brings relevance to the things that we are saying. You understand? So we have to highlight those as well. You know, like when the jump shot came out, that brought, that brought relevance and a similitude to what's going to eventually come out, which is the MOTB. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, various other things like the collapsing of the banking system. We have to bring that out in accordance with the scriptures. So we might use uh, the same scriptures we've been using, but they have deeper utterance now because we have um, we have more to put with it. You know what I'm saying? So as the revelation comes, we highlight it to you. That's, That's right. you know what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah. And 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 here again, like it's talking about you know uh, when you was mentioning about the jump shot and people you know, were yeah. sort of all on board with it, right? Yeah. This isn't necessarily talking about this, but you can see what, like, what played out during those times, right? You you understand the meaning, uh, how I just want to bring it out. And this is verse nine. It says, "Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted." It's lucky. It says, "Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake." Now that's going into the times. When the uh, the the, um, the saints are, are persecuted for the name of, of bringing out this gospel, right? But you can see in the next scripture, verse ten, it says, "And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another." Now, during the time of the jump shot and the lockdowns, weren't there a division between the people? Those that wanted the jump shot and those that didn't want the jump shot. Absolutely. Like you saw the division there. Now think about it. When you know. They introduced the, the RFID MOTB, right? Yeah. How how crazy things are gonna get there? You know, you're gonna have family betraying. Like, yeah, he's one of them. He ain't got it. Yeah, but, but, uh, look how easy people ran to that jump shot as well. You know, without without real persecution. But I mean, okay, there was social persecution. There was a, a feeling of social uh, of a social responsibility that was put on. The Exactly. You know, but they they weren't starving as such. Yeah. They weren't, you know, they weren't uh, facing heavy atrocities upon society. You know, and look how quickly they ran to that jump shot yeah. without really much persuasion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now think about the whole world collapsing and uh, uh, and the collapse of economy and peop- and and uh, pestilences and actual. You know, and actual things happening within the earth where people are told to, to go and take the MOTB. You know, look how they, they look how they ran to the jump shot. Yeah, yeah. You know, so these people will be. You know, all of these people really want this system to continue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so they can be a demon. It's like you know? it's like that that uh, movie, The Matrix. You know, there, there's many people that are still plug into the Matrix, and they'll do it whatever they can to defend it. You know, None. they'll even. You know, go against you to defend it, right? Exactly. And that, that's what we're seeing. You know, that's why uh, uh, people like Andrew Tate always reference the Matrix because obviously he's he's uh, not in the truth like that, but he's referencing because he's seeing it through through almost like a not a spiritual lens, but he's seeing the vibration, he's seeing the, the acts of, of how it's all playing out, right? And I'm just going to finish the last few scriptures just to, to touch on that as well. It says, um, Matthew 24 and 12, it says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right? And that's what it's talking about. When there's no food, you know, and, and people are, are, are fighting against the system, the love of many is going to wax cold. And you're going to see some really, really out there things, man. You know, the, the Lord's not playing when he talks about judgment coming to this place, right? It says, uh, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right? So, 
Christians in their churches talk about, oh yeah, I'm saved. You ain't saved until the end. You ain't saved until you're saved, right? Yeah. So, when it says you shall endure to the end, that means when they start introducing that RFID, Michael C. Hip, cut that out. Then people, you know, the ones that don't go, you know, don't go along the system, they're, they're in a better state of mind. You know, they're fighting against the system. So, if they're part of the elect, they're going to be delivered. Right? Well, the elect ain't going to fall for that anyway, but they'll be delivered. And this is the last verse, and then uh, let my brothers come in. This is uh, verse 14, and this is the point. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So we're out here preaching the gospel to whoever will receive it, or whoever can receive it. And you're witnessing the end of the society. That's why everything's yeah. gone, like, you know, gone yeah. crazy. I was going to say something else, but it's, it's yeah. gone crazy. You yeah, know, we yeah, were talking yeah. about this before. Yeah. How overnight, it's almost like this place turned into hell. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and, what, and what were we, and what's that, uh, you know, preach in all nations? And what are we really preaching? The, the bringing down of, of this. That's what we're prophesying, the bringing down of this. Uh, did you want to go? I got something that would fit, that would fit well. Yeah. That's cool. Um, okay, this is the book of Jeremiah, twenty-eight and eight. The prophets that have been before me, and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries, and against great kingdoms, of war, and of evil, and of pestilence. All right? Are we not in the midst of war? Are we not in the midst of evil? Are we not in the midst of pestilence? That is only going to increase. Okay? So this is what we are prophesying against. The down, we're prophesying against great kingdoms and their downfall. Okay? Yeah. That's, the, that's our manuscript given to us by the heavenly Father. Lord willing, we'd be a part of the elect that get, that get uh, delivered. Because you know, this place is about to, uh, it's about to experience some some next level. Uh, says in the scriptures, a day such as never has been since the earth has been. You know, and these banks are paraphrase. falling like dominoes. I mean, now HSBC is on the cusp. You know, massive mm -hmm. bank in the UK. If you don't know it, you know what I mean. Once that goes, you know, all the others are fair game, really. That's right. That's why we say, man, the, you know, putting your trust and faith in the system to go on is, is, is not a smart move. That CBDC, that will, that will usher in the CBDC. The CBDC will usher in the C hip, you know? And you, we can see the trajectory, okay? And, and, uh, we're trying to show you them who can hear. Yeah. So yeah, man, like when, when we say that the, um, you know, to, to put your faith in the Lord, to repent, to come back, you know, we're not saying this just to, to be saying it, right? We're out here giving you the warning. We're the watchmen. You know, we've been set up as watchmen to give you the warning to, for you to turn from your wicked ways to come back to the to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. You don't want to do it, then that's fine. But when them ICBM missiles start dropping on this place, don't be surprised. Don't be calling out to the Lord like, oh, Lord, please help me. He's going to be like, look, I sent my men out there to, to give you the warning, and you chose to, to turn your ear from it. Yeah, 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 because because that fire is coming, you know. This is Second Peter chapter 3 and 6. Whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perish but the heavens and earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward. And who are the usward? 
the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? To usward. Um, no. Where am I now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that uh, is long suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works therein, shall be burnt up. So that fire is coming. That, 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 that extreme heat is coming, you know? from those arrows, arrows that have been shot from, from uh, you know, from the other ends of the earth. You know, and who's going to do it? You've seen the battle lines already drawn. Russia stood up. You know, the BRICS nations have stood up. China stood up. they all opposing the stood. If India is no more part of Commonwealth. India, India will get involved. You know what I'm saying? You, you've, you've got, you've got uh, places like, as you said, France, is already starting to do business with the opposition. So nobody is really with Babylon the Great anymore. People are looking at who is going to come on out on top of, in this war. But you know who is going to come out on top? Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. And the 144,000 elect with the nation of Israel. That's right. Okay? I'll bring out a quick precept on what you said about um, all these nations turning against America. Turn it against the West, okay? And when we when we say the West, you, pretty, you might as well replace the word West with so-called white man, okay? Because that's, you know, when you think of Western society, really it's the so-called white man society, the society that he's constructed in this earth, man, which is a damn dunghill, okay? So um, this is the book. Uh, well, there's only one chapter, chapter one, and then I'm going to start at verse six. And this is talking about Esau, the so-called white man. It says, How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? And this is by way of the internet, man, which they, you know, these elites are dreading that they even created because of the fact that they knew that it was going to be the downfall of their society at one point, at some point in history. That's the reason why they're trying to ban TikTok and all that, you know what I mean? Because basically you know we're revealing the, these devils man their wickedness you know we're searching out his wickedness and that's what's meant to happen before the coming of our lord man verse 7 it says all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border okay so the people that were confederate with america or the so-called white man you know the people that were all joined up with him doing deals with him before they realized that he was just a dirtbag a damn scumbag that can't be trusted. Can't. So it says, All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border, to the edge, okay, to the brink of destruction, man. It says, The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. That's that bricks, okay? They've come together to, to turn against the US dollar, man, to, to turn America, Bab aka Babylon the Great, into a third world country. It says, all the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. So they succeeded in building that BRICS nation that's come up against the US dollar, man. Okay, it's looking like it's it's looking promising, man. You know, it's pros they're prospering in their ways when it comes to the destruction of America. All right. Alright, alright. It says, They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. You know? <laughs> they don't... These devils don't understand, man. They don't understand that it's the end of their society, man. You That's know? Right. They're, about to, they're about to be turned into a third world country and a lot of them are just oblivious. There's no understanding in them, man. You know? But the nations that were at peace with America have deceived them and laid a wound under them. They wounded their economy through gathering together. You know, you got Saudi Arabia that's made friends with Iran. They're not beefing anymore because they have a common enemy. You know what I mean? Everybody's basically turning against these devils, man. The curses are being put on them. They become the new nigger. 
They're the damn scum of the earth now, man. Everybody's seeing them for who the hell they really are. Okay? Dirtbags, man. Grimy dirtbags that can't be trusted. Anyway, that's it. I'm not. Just wanted to bring that out. Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Yeah, so we're going to hear, do you not see the wars taking place? Do you not hear the rumors of wars? Do you not hear, see the, as I said, the battle lines getting drawn? Do you not see that that is jumping off everywhere? The seditions of people. What's that scripture with the seditions of men? I think it's in Second Ezra, uh, seditions of, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, well, you know, we see the seditions of men, you know, we see all these things happening. You saw, but the scripture says, um, but the end is not yet. Okay, because as I said before, as we said before, the MOTB still has to come. The, the, the thermal nuclear destruction still has to come. You know, and, 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 and a few other minor prophecies. Huh? But we almost there. That's the whole thing. We almost there. For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom, we are in the midst of that. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. You know, a lot of the crop around the world has failed. You know that? That famine is just is, is at the door. That fam These supermarkets have three days worth of food in each of them. Okay? What happens in war? The supply lines get damaged. You can't pass ships across the sea anymore. If, if everybody's warring, you understand? No country anymore is self-reliant. They are reliant on on uh, on trade, foreign trade from around the world, be it for their food, be it for their fuel, be it for their uh, vehicles, be it for be it for anything, the tools to keep the place running. You know what I mean? The, 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 as I said before, the food. You know what I'm saying? So no place is self-sufficient no more. If I may say something about food real quick, because since we're on that topic a second, before I have to to my mind. Even locally, like grocery store that I shop at personally, like mostly, you know what I mean? Um, which is a major food chain here in England named Sainsbury's. Um, like you can't even find good garlic anymore, man, or onions. They're all sprouting and stuff because they're... They're selling stuff that's pretty much expired on well, the brink of expiring. And when I read the label to see the date, it said no date. I've never seen that before in history, man, where they say no date on the food. And the reason it said underneath there's no date because they want to, uh, uh, due to um, la uh, to not waste, basically. They're, they're, they're now conscious of waste. So they're starting to sell you food that is poor quality. Which shows you the times we're in, man. We are on the brink of food shortage. That's right. That's right. And it says, a pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So we are at the beginning of the end, basically. Okay? We are at the beginning of the end. And we're seeing that Babylon the Great is no more so great. Like we are talking before, major cities got people like they're full of fentanyl bent out over, you know, hunched over uh, for long periods of the day. They're getting, like, abdominal problems because of how their, their posture is, you know. Uh, the bad food that they have over there is taking its toll on the citizens, you know, like like uh, they are grasping at noonday, okay. They're, they're, they're once thriving society has become has become a, a, a desolate cesspool, okay? Right? And where, where, where have you got that? With, with, in the cities that have, that are, in the cities that are encompassed by people who are supposed to make our life better, aka big tech. You know what I'm saying? Who has Los Angeles? I think it's Google. You know, I think they've pulled out this. But they, even if they've pulled out, they've left the city absolutely desolate. People cannot afford the housing prices when the big tech has moved in. You know, people, they have uh, left the poor absolutely desolate. 
look look at the whole Silicon Valley for instance. It is finished. You know, all in the guise of these people who are supposed to make our life better. But look at it actually on the ground. You know, that's why the, the scripture says, never trust thine enemy. Because as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. You know what I mean? And all these people must have thought when these big tech organizations were coming to the city that, oh, wow, we're going to, you know, it's going to be booming now with jobs. It's going to raise the standard of our living conditions. What did it do? It put them in absolute degradation. They're living in their tent next to human, next to human shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what it did for them. Okay? That's what it did for them. And, and, and that is what it's doing for the, when we came here, we saw, we saw a dude absolutely through. You go to ma many of the major cities in the UK now, and you see more and more of that stuff actually taking place. You know, we know we are living in the last time because people are finished now. Okay? And, and, uh, your, your, your Western, your Western hierarchy, your Western, uh, Pop has been brought down to the ground. Yeah, yeah. I got a precept here. Just touching on what you uh, brought out earlier about sedition among men. This is the the book of Second Esther, chapter fifteen. I'm gonna read verse sixteen, and it reads: For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and their and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Now we're starting to see a lot of uprisings, a lot of protests, sedition among men. I mean, it ain't got to the, the focal point where people are fighting each other, you know? But it's to the point where we're seeing the beginning stages of, of people being unhappy with the way, uh, uh, the way things are, the way they're living, the cost of living, you know? Seeing people just raising up. You've got, um, in the UK, I think, what, what's that protest where they stop the traffic? Um, uh, what is it, the oil one? Yeah, stop oil. Stop oil. Yeah. 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 So you got them protesting, you know, and, and I don't even know what that's about, man, to be honest. <laughs> like, there's much more things going on in the world that are more important yeah. than that, man. And I mean, you got you, you got these I mean? people that are just constantly doing it, even at the threat of them being arrested. Yeah, now, I think, I th yeah, yeah, I think yeah. They've, uh, they've changed the laws now where they, they stop traffic, they get arrested. But I, I could be wild, man. I don't even know what the, the um, thing is about. But there's, you think about the um, the protests in Paris, in France, about the cost of living. They've raised the retirement age a couple of years and they, they burn the city down, you know? And it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And that's a perfect example. You know, you go into the city and everything's on fire and people are out there, you know, destroying cars, setting things ablaze. You know, you think about LA, you go in LA and it's just miles as far as the eye can see of just zombies you know you go yeah, to Detroit yeah, yeah, see yeah, yeah. you know they're standing on their feet while they're, they're slumped over they implemented your 15 minutes yeah. you know where they where the city where where a section of the city can be locked down at, at any given moment you know yeah. where where it needs to be and then someone from another section cannot enter that that section you know so you 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 in that 15 minute zone of uh, of uh, quarantine basically yeah. it's yeah. basically like quarantine it's basically locking it down so that they can uh, divide smaller sections uh, they, they can manage smaller sections more more easily and why would they have to do that because you can you only want to do that with the sedition of men you know where people are rioting and have just had enough of the of the um, of the autocratic rules that you have put a, you have put a, the, the draconian measures yeah. that you have put upon them you know? Yeah, but just talking back on, uh, you know, there shall uh, a man shall desire to go into his seat and shall not be able. That's not talking about now. That's talking about in, in the future when it, it does actually kick off. Okay. You know, That's and right. like like my brother said, these fifteen minute cities they lock it off. It's like yeah. a, a an open prison. 
you think yeah, yeah. Yeah. so so now you have the freedom to, to pretty much go where you need to go but you see how they are like slowly like like we were saying before the gradualism they're gradually moving into that that type of uh, lockdown mm-hmm. right it says for because the pride uh, because of their pride the city shall be troubled the houses shall be st- uh, destroyed and men shall be afraid so you're talking about these big you know strapping men that you know ain't afraid of nothing you're gonna see them afraid they're gonna be terrified of what's coming yeah. they'll be like women in that day yeah. you know powerless, powerless. exactly and it says uh, verse 19 which is the point it says and a, uh, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and because of great tribulation now there we go again talking about the food the bread situation and the lack of bread you know after everything kicks off and there's no supply chain you know, your merchandise your food storage is all, all empty you know the shelves are empty you know there's going to be a lack of uh, uh, there's going to be men afraid there's going to be men afraid because there's going to be people invading each other meaning you have a group of men kicking in the door and these big stra- you know, strong men being taken out because they've got a little bit of uh, food stored in their cupboards and everybody's trying to get at it. You know what I mean? There's going to be no such thing as friends there in them days. Right? Exactly. It's going to be every man for himself. People are going to be hungry, man. Yeah. You know, you know we're in, we're in all right times at the moment because you can say, oh yeah, my mate, you know, me and him got this plan, you know, where we, we you know, if he needs food, he can come to me. And if I need food, I can go to him. Hey, nah, nah. In them days, hey, he knows you got food and he's going to take you out. He's going to come with some some deception. Like, yeah, brother, yeah, I've got this plate here. Eat this food. It's poison. And you, <laughs> you end up dropping. And then he goes in and just takes it. That's it. That's it. Just start you get them all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. And then you drop. And then obviously he's like, yeah, cheers then. <laughs> it, it's amazing how it said. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing how it said when when will you start singing to get them all around? Because in the ancient times, the musicians like David was a musician. Just just off the point a little bit, as he said, when will you start singing to you get them all around? You know, they had the musicians with the prophets. The prophets used to actually move with the musicians. You know, so the musicians would sing. To actually bring the crowd, I was just thinking of that. As I said, when you, when will you start singing? You have them all around. Because if if if, if a singer was up here, yeah. if a singer was up here, oh man, you'd have crowds. You'd have crowds. You know what I mean? If That's if right. if that feel good factor was brought, you know what I'm saying? You would have crowds. They see us with Bibles and they mistake us as Christians, man. They just think we're some typical Bible bashers. Not understanding the value of the message that we bring, man. Yeah, so as I said that, it made me think of, you know, nobody, everybody wants to be entertained, you know. Are you not entertained? You know what I'm saying? Are you not entertained? Yeah, everybody wants to be entertained in order to receive something. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like in the times of Rome, that that shows you we're living in Rome. So what were they giving? They're giving them bread. The bread must have been hot and you know delicious from the oven and what the, You know yeah. what I mean? Must have yeah. had the the cold cuts over there with the bread. You know That's what I mean? It. But and then the entertainment as well. But because we are not providing entertainment, and uh, people are actually adverse to the Bible anyway. You know they 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 don't want to, you know they don't want to hear nothing. If if we were up here saying like, oh, this is the way you cultivate the best uh, marijuana crop, and uh, you know, and we had like uh, samples giving out, you know, and they'd that's be why you all see, up on it. That's why you see a lot of those uh, those those Israelite videos where Edomites come up and they're arguing, screaming, and you know it's about to kick off. They get the most views. Because people are here for the entertainment factor, as opposed to the message. Yeah, people actually want to be entertained. You know? Yeah, like like how he was saying, if you just start singing, this is when you're gonna sing. Because if you sing, you'll bring and and yeah, what's Jake known for? He's known for singing. You know what I mean? So if you had like Jodeci up in here, oh, I'm I'm going, I'm showing my age, but if you had your latest singer here, are there any more singers anymore? 
You know, who, who actually sings anymore? They <laughs> sing about the Bucks. These you had a mumble rapper up here. You He's know, singing about the Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The WAP. The WAP, yeah. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you had an entertainer up here of, of renown within the earth, the people would be flocking here, man. The, 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 you, you couldn't get cars through that road. You, you know, because they would want to hear them so bad. Yeah. But the, the 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 stuff that will actually save your life, you 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 turn your you turn your head away yeah. from. That's right. You know. That's right. Yeah, I've got a precept here. Um, obviously, the times that we're coming into just goes to show you that you know we're getting closer to to the end. That's why everything's starting to ramp up even more. You know, and it's going to end up eventually getting worse. But this is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And he knows that time is short. That's why he's trying to rush this, this uh, NWO. You know, yeah. He's trying to get that CBDC thing pushed out. Yeah, you know? and look at the acceleration in that. Yeah, look yeah. at the just, just that CBDC. Look at the acceleration in that. That thing's ready to go, man. He's ready to implement that. You know, get everybody on lockdown, and he's also, you know, he's he's just ramping up because he wants that control before the end. You know, look how close it is. It says, you know, uh, a few more prophecies that are left to, to take place. One of the major prophecies is that. Um, MOTB, RFID, C hip, and we can see that's literally on the borderline, and then World War Three, you know, the famines and all the all the great tribulations, and then the Day of the Lord. We are, you know, Yahweh Ratzar, Lord willing, we are the elect. We're out of here, man. Those that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. That's right. You know, you read that one more time. We'll bring our precept on that. Yeah, this is Revelation chapter twelve, verse twelve. It says, therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So the heavens is talking about as the people that are a part of this ministry. You know, this is time for us to rejoice, man. It says, woe to the people of the earth and of the sea. That's the body of people, the masses of this world, man. Okay, the people of the earth, okay, the worldly people. It's it's not good news for them, man. It's woe means death and destruction. So death and destruction is coming to the masses or the multitude that was born in vain. Okay? But um, that particular precept is talking about rulership. Because this is the reason why they're coming down with draconian measures and all that. The, uh, these so-called elites. Because they know that they don't have long left to rule, man. They know their kingdom is crumbling. And they know that Yasha Allah, okay, which is the elect of Israel... Okay, which is so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans predominantly. Okay, they know that the elect of Israel is getting ready to rule the whole earth next, and it's going to be a forever rulership, man. And they're tr they are not going to go out without a fight. Okay, they know they can't win; but they're going to die trying. So um, this is a precept on that, showing you that the whole Bible is basically talking about rulership. Okay, you've got people that are rightful rulers of this earth that are trodden down in society, packed in the ghettos and slums systematically, systematically oppressed, kept at the bottom, okay, so that we don't rise above them as we would. And this is the book of um, Second Ezra, chapter 6, and I'll read verse 9 to start, and then I'll sort of further expound on it by reading uh, before. So this is Second Ezra 6 to 9, it says... For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Esau is the nation of Esau Edom that currently rules this world now. Okay, these so-called elites, man. The higher ups of the nation of Edom, man, they rule the earth, okay? They have their central banks all over this world. They have their supremacy all over the world. Okay. So this is their world currently. So they're ruling at the end of the world, basically. It says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is the nation of Israel, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel in the book of Genesis, I believe, chapter 36. And uh, I forget the exact precepts. But um, 
I'm going to further expound on that because this is talking about rulership of Jacob and Esau. So I'll, I'll start a bit ahead. This is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 6 verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the part and the sender of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that following? So what Ezra is, is inquiring to the angel is that when is going to be the end of this current rulership? And the beginning of the new earth that's to come, you worry, mate. which the Bible calls the kingdom of heaven. Okay. It says, in verse 8, it says, And he answered and said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, which you can find in the book of Revelation, chapter 25, verse 19 on down. Okay. It says, uh, and he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. And that happened in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 26, I believe. And that happened because uh, there's, there's going to be an immediate, um, uh, an immediate transition of power. There's not going to be a gap in between. This is why Jacob held on to the heel of Esau, because when they came out, they were joined together. And, there was, and, and after... Esau come out, Jacob immediately came out after. Okay, there was no gap in between. And that was symbolic, man. That's the reason why that happened. And there was great significance in that event. Okay, but this explains why that happened. It's because of the rulership or uh, situation. Okay, so I'm going to read 2 Ezra 6 and 9 one more time. It says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed so Esau is the one ruling the current wicked system right now. Jacob is the one that's going to bring paradise to all of mankind, except for the nation of Edom, which are, which are known as the son of perdition, the ones that are going to be destroyed, man. A uh, precept to what I just read about the, the rulership and all that, you know, Esau ruling the current ghetto that we're living in, the current hell, okay, and uh, Jacob being... Uh, Israelites that are going to bring a forth paradise on earth. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 4. It says, The power <clears throat> so like it says, The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. And that first and foremost starts with our Lord Hamashiach Shai. Okay? So he's going to come to earth and dwell with us. And he's going to, and on, upon his second coming, and uh, we're going to have the heathen clean up this earth, and Yahweh Shai is going to show us how to run this place, man. Okay, and we're, we're getting ready to, the, the owner of this, the creator of this world is coming back to show us how it's done, and we're going to do it properly, okay, and everybody's going to be happy under our rule, man. So it says here, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. So the Lord is in control of who rules the earth. And right now he's got the basis of men set up. According to the book of Daniel, chapter 12, I believe. It's got the basis of men set up, which is the nation of Edom, the so-called white man, the bottom, the scum of the earth. It says, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. So the one that is profitable, is starts with our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and then the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. They're the ones that are going to be profitable to mankind. They're the ones that are going to bring forth paradise on earth that everybody so yearning for inside man okay thus saith the lord man that's right yeah and uh, and uh, just realize what time you're in as well you know realize the times that you're in realize uh, realize what's around the corner okay and, and it's getting ever closer and ever closer as well uh, just uh, if you can imagine it if you can think of it think about the time we, we're already under an energy crisis but think about the time when the lights don't come on at all, you know? Where the lights don't come on at all. Marauding hordes out in the streets that are unmaintained. Bodies that have been dead there and there's no municipality to pick them up. You know what I mean? A stench of foul odor more than you've ever, uh, more than you can, you thought you could ever bear, you yeah, know? And if I could say as well... Yeah. You ain't gonna be able to rely on the on the, the authorities or the law because exactly. they're gonna be out protecting their own family. Exactly. They ain't exactly. gonna be worried about you. Like why you know, they got their own stuff to worry about. They're, they're gonna, gonna be, be in the same them. boat, man. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna be in the same boat, exactly. Marauding hordes. Marauding hordes in the darkness. Blood piercing screams, blood blood curdling screams. 
of women and men alike and children going on in that dark. Yeah, you know, it's coming. Feeding frenzies where the where the the supermarkets have no food, where you have feeding frenzies on your neighbors or by your neighbors. You think about this as you well. Understand? A, lot, a lot of these these um, these wild animals, you know, they they're used to picking out like the garbage and, and feeding off the food there. There's no food for them. That's right. Hey, they, you're the next you're, option. Man. Yeah, you're. Hey, you're just as good as me. To That's them. it, man. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says that he's going to use teeth of wild beasts to bring the, to bring punishment upon the wicked. Yeah. Okay. Big hordes of men grouped together. Areas. Martial law troops killing people. You know. Uh, uh, just just a time, as I said, like no other. A time like no other. So, you know, think of this because this is coming to the world. You know, where you're going to have to have a savior. You're going to have to have someone that grants you salvation from this. Okay? And this, and this is, and this is, you know, think about the, 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 the destruction from the ICBMs. You know, all of this is coming. The, the society and the, the, the structure of society as you know it today is fast and rapidly eroding till it will be no more. Till now you are left in a state of chaos. What will you do? Who will you call upon? The name of the Lord is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. They are going to bring out an M to the A to the R to the K very soon that they're going to want to implement within your flesh. No matter what these other Israelite camps tell you, that's what they're going to do in time, in due season. Do not take that. Call on the name Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai in that day, if you can remember it, if the Lord has set up your spirit to remember. You know, have faith in the Heavenly Father because it's going to get real peak out here. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah, I got quick. Uh, research. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 5. I'll start at verse 14. Okay, and this is relating to the teeth of wild beasts and the famine that's coming, man. Okay, because this is a major prophecy and it's about to unfold in this earth. Your eyes will, unless you perish before then, your eyes will see what we're talking about and you'll realize that a prophet had been among you, man. It says, Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. And that's talking about our people, man. Okay, we're, the, we're a reproach because we're all over world star hip-hop, the spectacle of the nations looking like looking like animals, okay, because of the condition that the so-called white man put us in. Okay, he created that monster. Okay. Verse 15, it says, So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and an an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. World star hip-hop, man. It says, When I shall execute judgments in thee, in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes, I, Yahweh, have spoken it. It says, When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you. It says, And I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. Okay, and that's coming, man. You've got Tesco's, Sainsbury's, and all these shops are going to be empty because they're going to be looted, man. And then suddenly there's going to be no food in them, man. Yeah. It says, so will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. Just like my brother said, man, when there's no food around, them animals are going to start turning on the people. And there's going to be packs of dogs roaming around, chewing up people, man. You can okay? even uh, almost imagine, like, them... Uh them animal lovers going to the zoo and opening up the lion cage, yeah, yeah. letting, them, letting yeah, all those probably. animals out. Yeah, probably. you can, yeah. Yep. Wolves, lions, all that. Bear, yeah. However it plays out, it's of the Lord, man. The Lord is going to bring this to pass. Definitely they'll do that. So I'll start at the top of verse 17, Ezekiel 5 and 17 again. It says, So I will send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall berave thee. It says, And pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the, the sword upon thee. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. So it's going to happen. It's set in stone and there's nothing that can be done to turn it back. 
That's safe. Yeah. Now, 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 now visualize how close we are to that. You know That's what right. I mean? If you can, if you have the spirit to visualize how, visualize how close we are to that. Okay? That's right. Because yeah. um, there's a precept here in the book of Sirach 39, I'll start at verse 28. It says, There be spirits that are created for vengeance. It says, In their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So this is of the Lord, man, when you're getting chewed up by a pack of dogs or whatever. The Lord put the spirit on them to do that. And the Lord created that whole scenario. Because the Lord is nothing like what they portray him to be in Christianity. Man. But it says, I, the Lord, do all these things. That's right. You know? Isaiah 45. And, uh, yeah. So it says in verse 29, fire and hail, famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. So this famine that's getting ready to come is of the Lord, man. Don't think that the devil overrid the Lord's authority and started bringing evil upon the world. The Lord brought this upon the world to punish the people, man, because now we're in a time of judgment. So all them that are outside our spiritual ark, or the Lord's spiritual ark, should I say, are going to be left out there, man. The time of repentance is coming to an end. The Lord said he's going to laugh at your calamity, man, and mock when your fear cometh. All you that didn't listen to the prophets while you had liberty to hear us, man. Verse 30, it says, Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the swords. Basically, when you're camping out, you know what I mean? When you're fleeing martial law troops and you're in the wilderness, say, hey, man, you'll get eaten by, bit by scorpions or, or stung by scorpions, bit by snakes, serpents. You ain't, you ain't safe just because you're out in the wild. You think it's a calm water and you're pulled in by a crocodile. Hey, that's you it know? too, man. Teeth of wild beasts is going to happen on a large level in these days that we're getting ready to come into, man. You're not going to have the security of your peaceful, warm home sat in front of the fireplace watching football in the days that we're coming into, man. Yeah, I, I, I was just on that. I was watching, I was watch, I was seeing uh, uh, somebody in, in Oxfordshire got struck with by a crocodile. You know? So... You know, you know, people have venomous snakes that they let out. You know what I mean? They have venomous snakes that escape. Yeah. You know, people. You, you they had a lot of um, poisonous serpents escape a flat in London once, man. There you go. I think it was London. There you go. Could so have, could have been Birmingham. I think it was London, man. Yeah, man. You know, and there's many other cases. You know, big pythons with the you know power constrictors. Things like that, you know what I mean? That's it, man. So either one way or another, judgment is going to find you that are under the covering and the protection of Yahweh Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, man. Let me just uh, quickly go a quick preset on that last preset for me. Let's do the one of the 32, 24. Yeah. All right. All right. There's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. I'll start at 22. It says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. It says, I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. It says, they shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. It says, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Mm. Boom, man. Mm. And that's, that's foreshadowing what's coming in the, in the uh, times that we're living in, man. Because this is the time of the Lord's destruction, man. So the t things that we've written aforetime are written for our learning, man. Okay, they're to prepare you for what's getting ready to come to this earth, man. Because the Lord is getting ready to send the plagues of Egypt upon us again. You know what I mean? All the, all the plagues that e ancient Egypt suffered when we were delivered from uh, physical harmful bondage. The Lord is about to do the same thing to this earth again, man. So people are getting ready to be devoured with burning heat. 
when they're out there living in their tents or living in the woods or whatever. You know what I mean? You know, they're, they're, people are getting ready to be taken out of their comfort zone. You know what I mean? Like houses nowadays, you can go home, you've got uh, AC, you could just switch on the AC and you're good. Protected from the burning heat. But in the days that we're coming into, man, when you ain't got no power because all hell is broken loose, what are you going to do then, man? You're gonna, it's gonna, your house is going to be a sweat box. And, 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 the dead, and the dead will be like dung in the street. So, so that whole sweat box of no air conditioner and whatnot will be permeating with the stink of dead corpses <laughs> and rotten um, bodies. You know? It will all ele- also elevate the, the disease rates. Yeah, that's right. Pestilence, yeah, that's right. there you go. There you go. You know, especially when you ain't got a pot to piss in, literally. Or well, toilets ain't working. working. <laughs> Toilets ain't working. You're you're shitting in the streets and all yeah, that. Yeah, because because there it says that the dead will be cast out like dung in the streets. So people will be literally casting out dung into the streets. Yeah. You know, because uh, you wouldn't want to live with it in your house. The toilet can't flush. You got no water to actually flush. Yeah. Water's precious if you have a little bit yeah. more to drink it. You know, That's so it. It, it, it will literally be cast out like that. Uh, yeah. Your dung will be cast out in the street too. That's exactly. right. That's right, man. So I mean, so, no refuse, no people to pick up the the, the garbage, you know. So all right. of that will be in the streets. Yeah, because the cities are going to be cast down. The Bible says, man. So things are not going to function in the cities and in the in the in the streets. They're not going to be functioning as they do now. You know what I mean? When you ain't got no bin man coming along to take away your garbage because everybody's dying off. Yeah. And they've lost control of this whole thing. It's and nobody be wants to here. be out there. Nobody wants to be out there. You know? It's going to be absolute chaos out there. Man. So these are the times you need to brace yourself for. And you can only do that by getting the covering of Yahweh Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai. There's no salvation in any other name. You can't call on Jesus in that day. You're going to realize Jesus let you down. Okay? Oh, that false God, man. The damn devil. Okay? All right. Your brother's question. Okay. We hope you found the lesson edifying. And with that, we want to again give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakaq, Kudash. You know, and Shalom to the elect.